Welcome to the Create a Movement Podcast with your host, Ross Middleton. Hey guys, got a great interview for you today. This is with Pastor Rick Hunter. He is a church planner, a pastor, and is now responsible for spearheading all of the efforts of Church United in the church planting space. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, I'm sitting here with my friend, Rick Hunter. I've known Rick now for, I don't know, nine, ten years, something like that. More or less. Or less. And, uh, and Rick is doing a lot of work with church planting in the Church United world. But before we get into that, Rick, tell me just a little bit about yourself. you married, kids, how long you've been here, all that kind of good stuff. I am. I'm married, kids, and I've been here quite a while. I, uh, I was born here in South Florida in Hollywood, born and raised. My wife is a native Miamian, and uh, my wife, Dee Dee, and I got married 25 years ago and got three kids who are, if I can remember this correctly, 20, 21, and 23, and uh, a son-in-law as well. My daughter got married just before nice. Christmas, which was awesome. Uh, I uh, live in Fort Lauderdale, planted a church uh, about 13 years ago called City Church Fort Lauderdale mm-hmm. in downtown. I was sent out by Rio Vista Community Church uh, to plant uh, a church on just the other side of the river, still in downtown, less yeah. than a mile away, That's awesome. uh, to reach a completely uh, different community and demographic of people that, that Rio was reaching. And uh, so we started, eventually moved into the Flagler Village uh, neighborhood, which is mm-hmm. in between Sunrise and Broward. It's the hip kids, all the cool kids. Yeah, all the cool kids are, are living there, exactly, um, which makes it expensive to uh, to find property and to to uh, to get a place to worship. But but that's never stopped us before. Um, but yeah, so that's what that that's what a little bit about of my background. Uh, started a ministry uh, connecting church planters and churches together for the purpose of raising up church planters called Renew South Florida. And that's where you and I met Ross. Yeah. And um, at our very first meeting at the Titanic in Coral Gables, I think. Yeah, exactly. Titanic the Titanic Festival. Brewery. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that was a, that was a minute ago. Uh, but we, so we did Renew South Florida for, for quite some time. And about two years ago, uh, we merged with City to City Miami and I came on staff with them for a period of time. I now still sit on their board, uh, but I lead a ministry with the partnership of, of City Church Fort Lauderdale, City Church Pompano, and Rio Vista Community Church called the City Church Project, where we want to plant uh, churches that are specifically tailored to uh, unchurched and de-churched populations throughout mm-hmm. South Florida. I've got a residency program, developing a resident to send him out to plant in about a year and a half, uh, ideally in Lauder Hill, uh, which okay. is a primarily Caribbean neighborhood here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Awesome, man. What what made you want to plant a church a mile away from your birthing church? Yeah, what was um, the main. So I was I was on staff at at Rio for about two and a half years, and at that point in time, uh, the church was seeing some really great growth. It was seeing uh, all kinds of young families uh, come to the church, uh, people come to faith. Uh, it was exciting times in the life of the church. Um, but as we were at the church, um, Fort Lauderdale was growing up around us as well, yeah. and there were all these uh, condo buildings and apartments and lofts and new developments popping up all around, um, all around downtown Fort Lauderdale. But what we were seeing is that these people that were living in these areas uh, were not necessarily thinking uh, of going to church on a Sunday morning, and that's putting it mildly. Um, If they're thinking about spirituality in any kind of way, shape, or form, they weren't thinking, oh, therefore I'm going to go to a church on a Sunday morning in order to meet God or meet a higher power or something like that. So uh, we recognized that we had to— um, we couldn't just try and attract them to come to us, but somebody had to go to them. Yeah. Um, somebody that, that understood uh, the language of their culture, somebody mm-hmm. that understood uh, how to live among 
Uh, people who don't share faith live in a pluralistic society. And it's not that Rio wasn't doing these things. It's, it's more that, that Rio was so good at doing uh, what they were doing, attracting families, families with yeah. 2.2 kids, white picket fence, and a mm-hmm. suburban in the driveway, yellow lab, all that kind of <laughs> stuff, <laughs> more or less. Um, so, uh, so they sent my wife and me and a core of people, like I said, just a, about a mile away on the other side of downtown, and to this day, our churches share a lot of similarities uh-huh. in the same denomination. Yep. Um, but in other ways, they look very different mm-hmm. simply because of the way that they approach ministry and the way that we approach ministry. Yep. And we think that's a good thing. We yeah. think it's an important thing uh, for, for churches to look contextualized to their communities mm-hmm. uh, in order to best speak uh, the language of the culture and to translate the, the the message of the gospel into that culture. Yeah, that's great. So tell me a little bit about the Church Planting Alliance that you were kind of heading up for Church United. Yeah, so um, about six months ago, I was asked to form and lead a uh, Church Planting Alliance for, for Church United, and this was to bring... Uh, churches who were planting churches, organizations who were planting churches together uh, to kind of share best practices, to learn from one another, to develop a community of people um, where we actually don't just know who one another is, Mm -hmm. um, but we actually play nice together. We play in the same sandbox and we share our toys together, so to speak, if I can keep carrying the metaphor (laughs) uh, any further. But the idea behind it was to say, what already exists out there? What does it look like to, to create a pipeline uh, for identifying church planners to see uh, who's out there who ought to be um, considering ministry in the first place um, and maybe isn't? And then if they're considering ministry or pastoral ministry, what does it look like for them to consider uh, starting new churches, planting churches? And then how do we develop some sort of a mechanism for identifying who those people are and then take them through the process. So we want to we want to identify church planners mm-hmm. and uh, we're in the process of putting together an assessment. Uh, we're going to be partnering with Stadia and I know Calvary Chapel already uh, works with a ministry called CMM, Church okay. Multiplication Ministries. Um, so we, we want to get a, a, a continual rotation of church planter assessments going on down yeah. here so that so that we can help people figure out how they're gifted, how they're best gifted. Yep. So assessment, and then we also have a, a development track in that. So we want to identify church planners, and we want to develop them through that. And that that's offering things like coaching for church planners, specific church planter coaching, okay. and um, not just coaching, but also training. So city to city, Miami. Uh, does something that comes out of city to city in New York called the incubator training. It's a, it's a one to two year intensive theological vision, um, mission based, uh, cohort based mm-hmm. curriculum where church planners come together and they not just they they don't just get the theology of church planting, but they yeah. also understand the practice yeah. of how so to do so. Theology and best practices. Theology, yeah. best practices. It's it's gospel-based stuff as well, mm-hmm. so it speaks a lot to the heart, which yep. is highly important yep. uh, for, for anyone in ministry, but particularly for this, for church planters. And, uh, and, they, and they do something great. So we've said, how do we how do we see that replicated, not just in, in Miami-Dade, but also in Broward and in Palm Beach yeah. as well? coaching for church planners. We want to see every church planner have a coach that's able to walk them through the process mm-hmm. to help them solve problems, to help them analyze where they are in their in their particular process. So we have that in our development process. We also, um, one of our churches, uh, actually the City Church Project, has undertaken a, a really comprehensive research approach. Uh, they've partnered with uh, somebody in one of their congregations who is, um, who has worked with Vodafone and Coke and M M&M and Mars in the UK, uh, and she came forward and said, I, I, I've worked in this area before, and I think it could could help hmm. very well in in the project of what we're doing, as especially as we talk about unchurched and de-churched populations, understanding who they are, what are their pain points. What are they hearing when they hear church, when they hear 
the word Jesus when they hear yeah. uh, evangelical or whatever it happens to be. Yep. And when we start to understand them better, how do we, I don't want to say tailor our message because it's the timeless gospel sure. truth, but we understand how to speak the language, as I keep saying over and over again. So this comprehensive research project, uh, we're going to share with with Church United and with the Church Planning Alliance as a whole. So that's another way that church planters can be resourced to better be equipped for planting churches. And then ultimately, we want to see um, we want to see church planters be resourced. So we're kicking around ideas of how to not necessarily for us to provide funding for church planters, mm -hmm. but for us to. Um, bring the church planners that we've worked with, that we've we've given this metaphorical good housekeeping se seal of approval, yeah. that we're able to get them in front of the, the kind of donors who really believe in this, the importance yeah. of church planting for evangelism for the purpose of seeing a gospel movement. So we're kicking around ideas in the very, very early stages right now of a, of a shark tank, of bringing nice. uh, key donors and key patrons yeah. together who can hear different um, different church planners share their projects. And one person might not be interested in what they're doing. It might yep. not meet who they are. Mm -hmm. um, but another donor could say, wow, yeah, that's something that I, I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity to get behind. That's cool. So there's a lot of it that's still in flux, a lot of it that's still being developed um, in the church planting world, and it's the uh, it's the same here. And in any kind of entrepreneurial endeavor, there are there's the metaphor of of building an airplane while it's flying, out, yeah. as it's flying exactly. Sure. And so we're doing that. We're 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 literally flying the plane and building it as we go. Yeah, that's great. What about you know a lot of denominations, a lot of church planting networks will come here and plant. What does it look like for you guys? to work with them since a lot of them already provide assessment and coaching and stuff like that. So how, talk about the relationship with someone who might come here that's already part of a network or a denomination and then people that might, you know, kind of come through the process through church. Sure. Ed. Sure. So, so first of all, we welcome that. We, yeah. we need, um, we need lots and lots of gospel preaching churches yeah. here in the Miami Metro area yep. without a doubt. Um, we need to saturate this region with the presence of Christ and with people that are communicating the gospel in different ways. So we absolutely, absolutely welcome that. Uh, and, and because different organizations, because different denominations or movements have their own uh, assessment, a lot of times, uh, what we'll do is we'll say, we don't want to, we don't want you to reinvent the wheel with this. So if somebody has been assessed through a different organization or a different denomination, what we'd ask them to do is to share with us what their assessment looked like and maybe share their report of their assessment. So, and then when we, what we would do is we would tack on something that would be localized. Whereas regional denominations and regional alliances and organizations uh, are a lot of times going to assess somebody as a church planter. What we're adding on to that and what we're specifically looking for is this, are you ideal to be a church planter in South Florida? Because, Ross, as you know it, this place is weird. Um, <laughs> it's definitely it's, weird. It's weird, and I say that with a smile on my face sure. because I love it, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a part of the weirdness. Yeah, um, definitely. But it is not like, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> um, it is not like uh, other places. doesn't mean it's... it's um, so unique that there's no other place that's like this, that there, and no other place has its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, of course they do. It's just we have specific challenges down here, and we sure. know our cities really well, and we know other people who know them really well, and we can help um, lead somebody from the outside to the right fit for yeah. them. Can you, can you talk, speak just to a minute of some of the maybe unique challenges that you would find here? Well, at, first of all, I mean, this happens all the time. Housing stock is yep. crazy expensive. Yep. Um, it's it's almost prohibitively expensive. Yeah. Two, uh, transients is a major problem here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a major problem in any big city, uh, but it's it's especially unique to South Florida. Um, it, it, it is very challenging to to plant a church in a in a, an area where there is as much transients as there is here. Uh, thirdly, you have just this clash of cultures. 
Uh, yeah, you have a lot of different cultures. A lot of different cultures. You have, uh, you have the maybe it was originally a northeastern culture because people came down uh, at the time US one and now I ninety five from Boston, New York, Philadelphia, yep. and all of that. Um, and now, uh, so you have the the northeast fast paced aggression. Uh, you have a lot of Caribbean influence. Yep. Uh, you have. Uh, now uh, a growing South American influence. Mm-hmm. And so all these cultures that 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 are, have come together, a lot of times come together in a culture clash. Mm-hmm. Um, and you almost have different communities that, that rise up um, less as a melting pot, but but almost somewhat like homogenized from from place to place. Yeah. Um, so somebody has to know and understand, uh, the the uniqueness of South Florida and and um, and love it to empathize with it mm-hmm. um, and understand it and continue to learn through it. Um, we you, we see a lot of people who come here from other parts of the country who flame out because it it's just it's hard to deal with yep. unless you are very intentional about how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Uh, how would a new church planter who's coming to South Florida that may want to connect with you, find out about what you're doing, how would they even know that this organization exists? Sure. Um, that's a great question. Um, thank goodness we have something called Google.com. <laughs> and uh, it's a little website that was started a few years ago uh, where you can search for something. It sounds amazing. It is. It's pretty great. If you haven't tried it, you got to try it sometime. Um I think the website is google.com. I'll check it out. Um, but you, so we actually, we've, we've put together a website, very simple, um, that, that ha- lays out what, what we do, um, where we're going, what our strategy is for, for how people can get involved. And uh, we've seen people come through that already. They, they, they just type in church planting South Florida. I don't know how they found yeah. it, but they have found it. Um, it's on the Church United website. I believe it's church plant. I, I believe it's churchunited.city slash church planting alliance. Don't okay. quote me. Um, we can do multiple takes of this um, <laughs> afterwards, and I'll drop in what it really is. Um, but yeah, we have a website. We put it all together, and there's an easy way for people to get involved. And we've seen people come through this uh, specifically because they're asking the question, I want to be involved in this. Yeah. I need help. I know I, I, I might be very prepared. I might have planted churches elsewhere in the past, but I don't know South Florida as well as you guys do yeah, sure. um, collectively as a whole. So, so it's been a really great process for that as well. Um, so that's an easy on-ramp and then just word of mouth as well yeah. uh, because uh, we're an initiative of Church United um, it's an easy way for for when somebody connects with with a church and they hear about Church United and then somebody says, oh, you ought to meet with the people from the Church Planning Alliance. Sure. It's it's it, it's a seamless process in yeah. a lot of ways. Cool. How, what are you doing to find local church planners? How are you recruiting them? People that you said might have a call in their life to do that here locally. How are what, what are we doing to find those people, identify them and then train them? Sure. Well, that's that's definitely part of the process. Um, as much as we need to import people uh, from uh, from other parts of the country and other parts of the world, we also need to raise up our own. Yeah. We have to develop our own church planters who know, love, and understand this place, uh, but but might need some experience. Um, so we're developing relationships with churches to say, hey, if you have somebody um, on your team that you think is ready to be pushed out of the nest. I want you to consider whether they might be called to church planning. Yeah. Um, how do we get in front of your leaders? How so do talking we talk to our other local churches here that yeah. already have maybe a guy in the wings? Exactly. Or yeah. even long-term development where we, where we develop relationships with youth pastors. Okay. Um, so you've got some 14 year old kid who is sensing some sort of call and uh, exhibited some, some giftings yeah. uh, to ministry. What would it look like for them 10, 15 years down the road to begin uh, working now toward that end? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a really, it's a long play yeah. that we have in mind because this is not, this is not going to be the kind of thing that we, we see gospel movement and, um, and uh, amazing revival take place maybe in our lifetime. 
It might but not it might not be the kind of thing we see in our lifetime. Sure. But it's the kind of thing we work toward now. Yeah. Because we believe that 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 God has promised uh that his church uh will prevail. Sure. It's Hebrews and, eleven, uh, right? Hebrews eleven, yeah. exactly. The gates of hell also will not prevail against it. Yeah. Um and we believe that. We believe that strongly, yeah. whether we get to see it or not. Um, so we work toward that. And so we develop those relationships. Uh, we also host, um, we're going to be hosting quarterly or maybe three times a year gatherings, large gatherings where we have um, people that are uh, people that are church planting practitioners, maybe uh, maybe some subject matter experts who are speaking. Great. Um, and we're going to. Uh, we're going to cast the net really large that's to awesome. bring in people from throughout South Florida to come and, and check out what that's all about, whether it's somebody who's been planting for 15, 20 years or somebody who's going, I, I wonder if I'm even called to this stuff myself. Um, so we want to provide these large open doors for people to find out and hear about opportunities to get connected with other people who are in the church planting world and then move them through that pipeline for what it would look like to develop them. We also have churches that are doing residencies. I know the City Church Project does a residency. Mm-hmm. Um, I know um, there are. I know. I know Family Church up in uh, Palm Beach County has a, a pretty robust bivocational residency. Cool. Um, and there are other churches that are doing residencies, and and that's the kind of thing we need to see more of. We need to see more of of churches that are doing these internships or mm-hmm. residencies to to give uh, future church planners some some real hands-on experience yeah. not just ethereal or theoretical um, knowledge yeah. but actually give them some dirt underneath their fingernails yeah yeah i know that church united has some some goals to move the needle to the right in terms of evangelism in the in the region and seeing attendance obviously move up and engagement and discipleship and all that kind of stuff. Is there, have you guys mapped out that kind of stuff in terms of number of churches you want to be planted yet? Or is that something that's in the works or how does... That, yeah, that's something in the works. Um, what, what we've seen is a lot of times um, churches or people will throw out numbers and, and they're not necessarily informed by anything other than this is really what we'd like to see happen. And hope and faith. And, yeah, hope yeah. cross your fingers and yeah. and, uh, and and hope. Um, so we think we, we need to take a step before that gotcha. and actually put the mechanisms in, in place. And then we can take a look back and say, okay, what, what have we done so far? What are some of the steps that we can take? And now let's take a gauge and look at what those metrics would look like. But I do know, um, you, you mentioned the evangelism initiative that Church United has, mm-hmm. um, especially in partnership with, with Alpha. Yep. Um, I had an opportunity to go with, with Church United to, uh, to the UK, to London, uh, a year and a half ago uh, to, to experience one of these Alpha one-week kind of deals. And it was, it was really remarkable because what's happening in the Church of England, in the Anglican Church there, um, there's, there's a movement of church planning taking place that's been fueled by Alpha. Yep where um, alpha groups start up and they start bringing people to faith. People start hearing the gospel, maybe for the first time, responding in faith to the gospel. And then they start planting churches, and these bishops in, um, in the Church of England are saying, here's this older, dying church that was once this amazing beacon in the community, mm-hmm. and we would hate to see it disappear. You guys want to take this, you want to take this amazing building and do real gospel ministry here. Yeah. And we're seeing that take place. It, oh, what would it look like um, for something like that to take place yeah, here in South Florida? So we're actually working with Alpha um, as it relates to church planting. We're, we're, we're helping our church planters uh, not tack on evangelism as, a, as another thing, as a, an add-on, uh, but to develop their core teams or their launch teams from an alpha group to have D- have the the DNA of evangelism, evangelism yeah. from the very beginning. Yep. Because if it, if it doesn't happen that way, it's next to impossible to tack something like that on. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't think that's a coincidence. 
as to why it's next to impossible mm -hmm. if it's added on because evangelism should never be an add-on. Mission should never be a, a department of a church. Yeah. It should be the fuel you are. of the church. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody's listening to this, so another city, and they're going, man, this sounds amazing, but where does the money come from? Because I would take some money to fund some of this stuff and the assessments and you're bringing in people from the outside experts in different fields to, to help in certain areas. So what does funding even look like? Well, that's where we are right now. Um, I, I believe I mentioned Calvary Chapel is doing an assessment that they've graciously opened their hand and said, hey, if there's other church planners from South Florida or prospective church planning candidates mm -hmm. from South Florida who need assessment. We want to open up our assessment. It's been remarkable. That's awesome. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, we're working with an organization called Stadia. Uh, and Stadia uh, helps regional networks develop uh, assessments to develop um, project management, all these kind of essential things for church plants okay. um, and for a movement of church planting. So they've been gracious as well. Um, they just want to share with with the broader church so great. we've we've capitalized on that developed a great relationship with them and with justin moxley um who's been helpful in all of that um the other thing is there there are coaches that have already been trained through through the ministry that i used to lead called renew through city to city um they have that and so if a church planner needs a coach those coaches are already available they the church planter would have to um, cover the costs themselves. Um, but they've already been trained. They already know how to do yep. it. Um, city to city Miami does something called the, the incubator. I believe I mentioned that yep. as well. Um, that is, that is something that, that they as a ministry exist for that purpose of training up and raising up leaders. There's a cost to it mm -hmm. for a church planner. Um, but a lot of the stuff has been underwritten and okay. city to city has said they don't have to be a city to city church planner. In fact, there is no city to city church planner. The idea is that they would help fuel the movement of the church. And they've said, so all these organizations, what we've said mm -hmm. is who does what, who plays nice, how do we share? Yeah. Um, there are, uh, there are church planners that are coming together in community on a monthly basis uh, to get resource, to, to get fed by the gospel and to pour into one another's lives. That's, yeah. That stuff doesn't cost money. Sure. I mean, it costs something because somebody has to, to pay for the coffee and donuts yeah. and pizza. Um, but a lot of that stuff is, is done at a low cost. But it will cost money in, in the future. It will cost more. And so we're praying that God would raise up donors and patrons who would see the, the import of such a thing as what we're doing. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, a few last questions for you here. Uh, I, I'm always interested to know how God has moved in, in your heart as a result, specifically of, as you said, playing nice with other pastors. Mm -hmm. Like how, what have you gleaned or gained from rather than having a barrier, you know, with the pastor down the street, yeah. actually, working with them and doing things with them. Like what's it, what's it brought into your life yeah. that you otherwise would not have? Uh, absolutely. That, that's a really good question, Ross. Um, I, I can't speak for others. I can speak for myself, but I, I know this, I believe it's actually made me a better Presbyterian. So I'm a Presbyterian minister. And what I mean by that is it hasn't made me dig my heels in better, mm -hmm. but it's allowed me to be Presbyterian in the way that, that I'm credentialed in the way that I'm, the, mm -hmm. the way that I, I sense an affinity towards, if you will. And the reason it's allowed me to do that is it's allowed me to, to recognize my blind spots. It's allowed me to recognize that I, I can learn so much from my Pentecostal sisters and brothers. I can learn so much from my Methodist sisters yeah. and brothers, from my Baptist friends as well, that, that there are so many things um, that are out there in the broader Christian community. And, it, and it, I think it's important to say that we don't lose our distinctiveness because yeah. there's something about our distinctiveness being brought to the table that others don't share. Yep. Much in the same way that at the end of the scriptures, we talk about every nation, tongue, and tribe that sure. are gathering around, around 
um, the the lamb and and they're crying out together. Mm-hmm. But there's still every nation. There's still every tongue. Yeah, distinct there's cultures. There's still every and, tribe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Those distinct cultures are important for bringing some harmony and unity together. So it doesn't mean us that that we we lose our distinctiveness as to who we are, but we hold it maybe with a with an open hand. A little looser. A little looser, yeah. um, and much more winsomely and much more graciously, because it should cause us to be more humble. Yeah. It should it should cause us to say, yeah, there there are reasons why I'm a Presbyterian. Yeah. But man, we don't have it all figured out at yeah. all. Like, I mean, everyone else listening already already knows the answer to that. <laughs> um, but I'm just figuring that out. But there are some things that I said I think are really important to being distinct, but learning from one another, sharing from one another, developing relation tri- relationships across tribes and yeah. and um, denominational boundaries. It's been an enriching um, period of, of, of life and ministry for me. And I know, um, just simply by developing those relationships that, uh, that God has brought my way, um, I've been enriched by it. I mean, the two of us right here sure. are, are one of those. Yeah. Well, I think it should be that, you know, Presbyterians and Baptists make fun of each other for how they baptize mm-hmm. and still and we do. get along. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and it's not a big deal, you know, like if we see things a little bit differently, that's, that's fine. And, uh, I think there's a lot of, a lot of freedom that comes in there rather than, you know, seeing different camps of, you know, theology, like you said, kind of dig their heels in. It's a lot more, it actually makes, I find a lot more fun, you know, when you Absolutely. do ministry with people that are a little bit different than you and, and everybody's secure enough to kind of give each other a hard time about, Mm-hmm. You know, whatever their whatever their theological distinctives are. And so, I mean, I think that's so great. And I totally, totally agree with it. Uh, man, last question I want to ask you is just what is in the long run? What's like the big picture for you? What, what are you hoping to see be birthed out of Church United? Maybe in the capital sense, capital C sense, rather than just your kind of niche or your corner of it. What are you hoping to see happen in the region as a result of it? Oh, well, I the the word gospel movement is the one that keeps coming coming back. Uh-huh. Um, I would love to see a, a real movement of God's spirit in South Florida yeah. in a way that that really um, is birthed by by churches having this kind of spirit where mm-hmm. they want to work together. They recognize that they don't have all the answers and they we that we need one another. Yeah. Um, Lifting high the banner of of evangelism and in speaking the language of culture, of continuously planting churches in order to saturate Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, yeah. um, getting behind and understanding uh, how to serve uh, the 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 schools in our in our region, um, really understanding how how uh, churches can can equip people for life um, in their faith, for, for work, that their faith speaks to their work, um, to understand that, that everybody has a sacred calling. And what, what I mean by that is not um, anything other than that everyone's vocation mm-hmm. um, is, a, is a calling from God. Yeah. It's, well, the word vocation means a calling um, so that people would understand where they are and that their work matters, that it, yep. it that is important. Um, and so all these things come together. We would love to see, I would love to see, um, I, I would love to see the name of Jesus um, be one that, that is, uh, that is transformative, one that, that people know in ways that they hadn't um, in that, that you, even just little things we talk about moving the needle of, of more people coming to faith, but what mm-hmm. would it look like if if those who didn't have faith, those who didn't proclaim faith, still saw the church as a tremendous asset to South Florida? Yeah. What would it look like for 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 somebody who was a, a died in the wool atheist, or somebody who was a skeptic, or, or somebody from another faith that, that would say, "Listen, I don't I don't believe what they believe." Mm-hmm. I might even think they're crazy, <laughs> but man, I'm glad they're here because yeah. they do some amazing stuff. Our schools yeah. would look our completely different. Our community is different. better because of it. Yeah, yeah. Our, our community, our, the people, people that are business owners, people that work in the corporate world, people that are, are blue collar laborers, um, understand how their faith impacts what they do and, and it would revolutionize everything.
anything. That that's the kind of stuff that I that I dream about. That's that's the kind of stuff that I dream about. Um, resting my head on my pillow and closing my eyes for the last time and, and imagining a world in which that kind of stuff took took place, and 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 just being so thankful that that God would allow somebody like me to to partner in mm-hmm. in this kind of thing, that He would allow me to work yep. toward that end. That's that's the kind of stuff that I look forward to. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Rick. Appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for all you're doing for our region. Yeah, man. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that awesome interview from Rick Hunter, who is spearheading all of the church planting initiatives for Church United. Hope it gave you some new categories to think through, some different things to encourage you and challenge you with. And I hope that it will spur you to do something similar in your own city. God bless you guys. See you in the next one.